Hi, my name is Seth Perkins, and this is PoetrySpoken.com, episode 146. I love the work of Allen Ginsberg. I consider Walt Whitman to be America's poet. Ginsberg, I see as the urban poet of America in the 20th into the 21st century. He takes ideas which, which I see as coming out of Whitman and really frames them inside of language which is influenced by jazz and is raw and primal and sensual and, and sexual and quite frankly it's the kind of language that just gets me excited. As a relatively young man and young American I was amazed when I started reading the history of Howell. The publication of this poem landed both the author and his publisher in jail. The San Francisco Police Department considered it the distribution of obscenity. And the court cases surrounding this poem went all the way to the Supreme Court, which in America is the highest court in the land, before it was determined that Howell was protected speech under the U.S. Constitution's First Amendment, which is the freedom of speech. It amazes me that in the lifetime of my parents, a poem sent somebody to prison. And I know in other countries, even today, this poem would never have seen the light of day. But being a young American, I sometimes take it for granted, our freedom of speech. And I know many of us do too, but it was not too many years ago where a poem could have been considered obscene. Those of you who have followed this channel, you'll also know that I have a thing for epics. Child Roll Into the Dark Tower came by Browning. The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Howell is a long narrative about Ginsburg and the fellow members of the Beat Movement and their various adventures. It's framed inside of a conversation with Carl Solomon. It's dedicated to Carl Solomon. Carl Solomon was somebody that Ginsburg met while he was temporarily institutionalized. Before I get into this, I want to make it clear that one, the works of Ginsburg are copyrighted. And Usually on my channel, I'm only reading stuff in the public domain. I make an exception here for Ginsburg. And I want to make it clear that if you are somebody who represents this copyright and you need me to take this down, I will take it down in a heartbeat. Number two is if you are the kind of person who is easily offended by such things as literary depictions of hetero or, or homosexual sexual, sexual intercourse, this is not the video for you and this is not the channel for you and you're going to unfortunately miss out on a really fun experience and I feel a little sorry for you. That being said, I'm reading this standing up because I need a lot of air. This is the most difficult reading I have ever done. This is Howl by Allen Ginsberg for Carl Solomon. One. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. Starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient, heavenly connection to the starry dynamo in the machinery of night. Who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz. Who bared their brains to heaven under the L and saw Mohibitan angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated. Who passed through universities with radiant cool eyes hallucinating Arkansas and Blake-like tragedy among the scholars of war. Who were expelled from the academies for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull. Who cowered in unshaven rooms and underwear, burning their money in wastebaskets and listening to the terror through the wall. Who got busted in their pubic beards turning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York. Who ate fire and paint hotels or drank turpentine in Paradise Alley, death or purgatory their torsos night after night, with dreams, with drugs, with waking nightmares, alcohol and cock and endless balls. Incomparable blind streets of shuddering cloud and lightning in the mind leaping toward poles of Canada and Patterson illuminating all the motionless world of time between. Peyote solidities of halls, backyard, green tree, cemetery, dawns, wine drunkenness over the rooftop, storefront, burrows of tea ride, joy ride, neon blinking traffic lights, sun and moon and tree vibrations in the roaring winter dusts of Brooklyn, ash can rantings and kind king light of mind. Who chained themselves to subways for the endless ride from Battery to Holy Bronx on Benzinger and into the noise of wheels and children brought them shuddering, mouth racked and battered, bleak of brain, all drained of brilliance in the drear light of zoo. 
who sank all night in submarine light of Bickford's, floated out and sat through the stale beer afternoon in desolate fugazis, listening to the crack of doom on the hydrogen jukebox, who talked continuously seventy hours from park to pad to bar to Bellevue to museum to the Brooklyn Bridge, a lost battalion of platonic conversationalists jumping down the stoops off fire escapes off window sills of empires stayed out of the moon, Yakety yakking, screaming, vomiting, whispering, facts and memories and anecdotes and eyeball kicks and shocks of hospitals and jails and wars. Whole intellects disgorged in total recall for seven days and nights with brilliant eyes meet for the synagogue cast on the pavement. Who vanished into nowhere, Zen, New Jersey, leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall. Suffering eastern sweats and Tangerian bone grindings and migraines of China under junk withdrawal in Newark's bleak furnished room. Who wandered around and around at midnight in the railroad yard, wondering where to go and when to leaving no broken hearts. Who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 racketing through snow toward lonesome farms and grandfather night. Who studied plot in his pose, St. John of the Cross, telepathy, and Bob Kabbalah because the cosmos instinctively vibrated at their feet in Kansas, who loaned it through the streets of Idaho, seeking visionary Indian angels who were visionary Indian angels. Who thought they were only mad when Baltimore gleamed in supernatural ecstasy. Who jumped in limousines with the Chinaman of Oklahoma on the impulse of winter midnight streetlight small town rain. Who lounged hungry and lonesome through Houston seeking jazz or sex or soup and followed the brilliant Spaniard to converse about America and eternity, a hopeless task, and so took ship to Africa. Who disappeared into the volcanoes of Mexico, leaving behind nothing but the shadow of dungarees and the lava and ash of poetry scattered in fireplace Chicago. Who reappeared on the West Coast investigating the FBI in beards and shorts with big pacifist eyes, sexy in their dark skin, passing out incomprehensible leaflets. Who burned cigarette holes in their arms, protesting the narcotic tobacco haze of capitalism. Who distributed super communist pamphlets in Union Square, weeping and undressing while the sirens of Los Alamos wailed them down and wailed down wall and the Staten Island Ferry also wailed. Who broke down crying in white gymnasiums, naked and trembling before the machinery of other skeletons. Who bit detectives in the neck and shrieked with delight in police cars for committing no crime but their own wild cooking pederasty and intoxication. Who howled on their knees in the subway and were dragged off the roof waving genitals and manuscripts. Who let themselves be fucked in the ass by saintly motorcyclists and screamed with joy. Who blew and were blown by those human seraphim, the sailors, caresses of Atlantic and Caribbean love. Who bawled in the morning and the evening in rose gardens and the grass of public parks and cemeteries scattering their semen freely to whomever come who may. Who hiccuped endlessly trying to giggle but wound up with a sob behind a partition in a Turkish bath when the blonde and naked angel came to pierce them with a sword. Who lost their love boys to the three old shrews of faith, the one-eyed shrew of the heterosexual dollar, the one-eyed shrew that winks out of the womb, and the one-eyed shrew that does nothing but sit on her ass and snip the intellectual golden threads of the craftsman's loom. Who copulated ecstatic and insatiate with a bottle of beer, a sweetheart, a package of cigarettes, a candle, and fell off the bed and continued along the floor down the hall and ended feigning on the wall with a vision of ultimate cunt and cum eluding the last jism of consciousness. Who sweetened the snatches of a million girls trembling in the sunset and were red-eyed in the morning but prepared to sweeten the snatch of the sunrise flashing buttocks under the barns and naked in the lake. Who went out whoring through Colorado in myriad stolen cars, Neil Cassidy, secret hero of these poems, coxman and Adonis of Denver, joy to the memory of his innumerable lays of girls in empty lots and diner backyards, movie houses, rickety rows on mountaintops and caves or with gaunt waitresses and familiar roadside lonely petticoat upliftings and especially secret gas station solopisms of John's and hometown alleys too. Who faded out in vast, sordid movies, were shifted in dreams, woke on a sudden Manhattan, and picked themselves up out of the basements, hung over with heartless tokay and horrors of Third Avenue, iron dreams, and stumbled to unemployment offices. Who walked all night with their shoes full of blood on the snowbank docks, waiting for a door in the East River to open to a room full of steam heat and opium. Who created great suicidal dramas on the apartment cliff banks of the Hudson under the wartime blue floodlight of the moon and their heads shall be crowned with laurel and oblivion. Who ate the lamb stew of the imagination or digested the crab at the muddy bottom of the rivers of Bowery. Who wept at the romance of the streets with their pushcarts full of onions and bad music. Who sat in boxes breathing in the darkness under the bridge and rose up to build harpsichords in their lofts. 
who coughed on the sixth floor of Harlem, crowned with flame under the tubercular sky, surrounded by orange crates of theology, who scribbled all night, rocking and rolling over lofty incantations, which in the yellow morning were stanzas of gibberish, who cooked rotten animals, lung, heart, feet, tail, borscht, and tortillas, dreaming of the pure vegetable kingdom, who plunged themselves under meat trucks looking for an egg, who threw their watches off the roof to cast their ballot for eternity outside of time, and alarm clocks fell on their heads for every day for the next decade, who cut their wrists three times successively, unsuccessfully, gave up and were forced to open antique stores where they thought they were growing old and cried, who were burned alive in their innocent flannel suits on Madison Avenue amid blasts of leaden verse and the tanked-up clatter of the iron regiments of fashion and the nitroglycerin shrieks of the fairies of advertising and the mustard gas of sinister intelligent editors or were run down by the drunken taxi cabs of absolute reality, who jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge, this actually happened, and walked away unknown and forgotten into the ghostly days of Chinatown soup alleyways and fire trucks not even one free beer who sang out of their windows in despair, fell out of the subway window, jumped in the filthy Passaic, leaped on Negroes, cried all over the street, danced on broken wine glasses, barefoot, smashed phonograph records of nostalgic European 1930s German jazz, finished the whiskey and threw up, groaning into the bloody toilet, moans in their ears and the blast of colossal steam whistles, who barreled down the highways of the past, journeyed to each other's hot rod Golgotha, jail solitude watcher, Birmingham jazz incarnation, who drove cross country 72 hours to find out if I had a vision or you had a vision or he had a vision to find out eternity, who journeyed to Denver, who died in Denver, who came back to Denver and waited in vain, who watched over Denver and brooded and loaned in Denver and finally went away to find out the time and now Denver is lonesome for her heroes who fell on their knees in hopeless cathedrals praying for each other's salvation in light and breasts until a soul illuminated its hair for a second, who crashed through their minds in jail waiting for impossible criminals with golden heads and the charm of reality in the hearts who sang sweet blues to Alcatraz, who retired to Mexico to cultivate a habit or Rocky Mount to tender Buddha or Tangiers to boys or Southern Pacific to the black locomotive or Harvard to Narcissus to Woodlawn to the daisy chain or grave, who demanded sanity trials, accusing the radio of hypnotism, and were left with their insanity in their hands and a hung jury, who threw potato salad at City College of New York lecturers on Dadism and subsequently presented themselves on the granite steps of the madhouse with shaven heads and harlequin speech of suicide demanding instantaneous lobotomy, and who were given instead the concrete void of insulin, metrazole, electricity, hydrotherapy, psychotherapy, occupational therapy, ping pong, and amnesia who in humorless protest overturned only one symbolic ping pong table resting briefly in catatonia, returning years later truly bald except for a wig of blood and tears and fingers to the visible madman doom of the wards of the mad towns of the east, pilgrim state rocklands and greystones fetid halls bickering with the echoes of the soul rocking and rolling in the midnight solitude bench dolmen realms of love dream of life a nightmare bodies turned to stone as heavy as the moon with mother finally asterisking the last fantastic book flung out of the tenement window and the last door closed at 4 a.m. and the last telephone slammed on the wall in reply and the last furnished room emptied down to the last piece of mental furniture, a yellow paper rose twisted on a wire hanger in the closet and even that imaginary, nothing but a hopeful little bit of hallucination. Ah, Carl, while you are not safe, I am not safe, and now you're really in the total animal soup of time, and who therefore ran through the icy streets obsessed with a sudden flash of the alchemy of the use of the ellipse and the catalog, the meter and the vibrating plane, who dreamt and made incarnate gaps in time and space through images juxtaposed and trapped the archangel of the soul between two visual images and joined the elemental verbs and set the nouns a dash of consciousness together, jumping with sensation of pater omnipotens eterna deus, to recreate the syntax and measure of poor human prose and stand before you speechless and intelligent and shaking with shame rejected yet confessing out the soul to conform to the rhythm of thought in his naked and endless head. The madman bum and angel beat in time unknown yet putting down here what might be left to say in time come after death and rose reincarnate in the ghostly clothes of jazz and the gold horn shadows of the band and blew the suffering of america's naked mind for love into an ili ili lama lama sabak thanthi saxophone cry that shivered the cities down to the last radio with the absolute heart of the poem of life butchered out of their own bodies good to eat a thousand years <laughs>